So in this lecture, I want to talk about the use of the microscope in terms of the objectives and how to always keep a sample uh, both in focus and in the center of view. So I want to start by talking about four different objectives and various characteristics that apply to each of these four objectives. Okay. So the various characteristics I want to talk about relating to these different objectives include field of view, resolution, the focus knob that we use with each of them, and the depth of focus. And we'll talk about each of these. Okay, so as we move from 4x to 100x, we increase magnification. Now, field of view is how much of the surface area of the slide you can see using each of these objectives. So the objective that has the greatest field of view, that is, lets you see the most of the surface area of the slide, or the greatest surface area of the slide, is going to be the 4x objective greatest, while the 100x is going to have the least field of view. So from least to greatest, let's draw like this, least to greatest, okay, resolution is the amount of detail you can see in your sample. So the higher you go in magnification, the better the resolution of your particular sample. So. 4x, in this case, is going to have the least amount of resolution, while 100x will have the greatest. Okay. Which now brings us to the focus knob that we're going to use with each. So, 4x should always be used in conjunction with the coarse focus knob. Whenever you place a sample on the microscope, you should always start by placing your objective lens at 4x and using the coarse focus adjustment knob to bring your sample into focus. Always, always, always start with 4x and coarse. I can't stress that enough. If you go up in magnification too soon, you're not going to be able to find anything. And if you attempt to adjust your focus using the fine focus adjustment knob when you're at 4x, you're also not going to be able to bring your sample into focus. So, as soon as you place that slide onto the stage, use the 4x in conjunction with the coarse focus adjustment knob to bring that sample into focus. Okay. Once you move up to 10x magnification, okay, the 10x objective, you're going to use the fine focus adjustment knob. Okay. These microscopes are called parafocal, which means as you switch from one objective lens to the other, if you focused it initially, your slide is going to remain relatively in focus, and you only need to make fine or small adjustments to focus your sample. So you'll use fine. So everything after 4x, you should be using the fine focus adjustment knob. So I use it for 40, and I'll also use it for the 100x objective. Now, depth of focus refers to how much you can move through the slide and remain in focus. So the adjustments you can make to focus while still retaining focus. Okay? In other words, if you think about it, your samples aren't sitting flat. They're actually occupying a three-dimensional space. So there is some area within that space that you can move using the magnifying lens that will still be in focus. But what depth of focus is asking is how great is the upper and lower limit of that focus, where our sample will still remain in focus. And the key to understanding depth of focus is in the focus adjustment knobs that we use. If we're making fine adjustments to focus, it means we have less depth of focus. Okay? And if you think about that, it makes sense, because at 40x, just a slight modification to the fine focus knob can make your sample go completely out of focus. Whereas with 4x, 
We're making coarse or really drastic adjustments to bring it into focus. And once it's in focus, if you turn that fine focus adjustment knob, the sample really doesn't go out of focus. So the 4x objective is going to have the greatest depth of focus, while the 100x objective is going to provide us with the least depth of focus. Okay. So that is how much alteration can you make to the focus knob and still keep your sample in focus. 4x provides us with the greatest amount of wiggle room. We can turn those fine focus adjustment knobs and still remain in focus for the most part on 4x. But at 10, 40, and 100, as we move from objective to objective, that amount starts to decrease. So the depth of focus decreases with magnification. Okay. So that's all I want to talk about in terms of this. Now what I want to show you real quick is how to move from objective to objective and retain both focus as well as keeping your particular sample center. Okay, and I'll talk about a special case scenario where you're going to use the 100x objective, even though you technically didn't in this lab. Okay, so initially I start at 4x and my course focus. And let's say that I see my cheek cell right there, okay? So I see my cheek cell. 4x focus, uh, or 4x objective, and I bring it to focus using the course focus adjustment knob. Okay? Now before I move to the next objective, I need to first ensure that it's focused using the course focus with 4x. And then also what I'm going to need to do is center this in the field of view. If I do not center that cell in the field of view, then as I move up in magnification, I run the risk of losing that. Okay, so let me show you. First off, let's say I do center it, and I move up to 10x. Okay, so I'm going to move up to 10x. and there is my cheek cell. Now, it's for the most part in the center, but I'm still going to center it just a little more. So I'm going to move the view a little more so this is in the center, and I'm going to bring it into focus using the fine focus adjustment knob. And I move up to 40x. Okay? There's my cell. If it's centered, awesome. I'm going to bring it into focus using the fine focus adjustment knob. And then I'm going to move up to 100x. Now, when you move up to 100x, you actually have to use oil immersion. And I do give an example of this in the tutorial for microscopy about how to use oil immersion. Basically, oil immersion allows the light to remain in a singular beam instead of fragmenting when it comes out of the slide's glass. And by keeping it in that defined beam, it improves the resolution at this magnification. Okay. If we use the 100x objective without oil, our sample is going to appear very fuzzy and we're probably not going to be able to bring it to focus. So I use oil with 100x, and I'm going to use the fine focus to bring it into focus, and then hopefully I get my cheek cell. Okay? So this is what happens if you constantly recenter and refocus. Here's what happens if I didn't recenter that. So I'm going to follow the same steps. But I'm not going to recenter. Okay, so as I zoom in now, notice the cell has shifted slightly in the field of view because I'm now looking at a smaller surface area of the slide or piece of the surface area of the slide. And the cell happened to be off to the right. So I'm going to bring it up to 40x. Maybe I'll get something like that. Okay, so I still see that cell to a degree at 40x, but it's off to the side. And then if I took it all the way up to 100x, I might not see any cell at all. Okay? So this is why it's important to recenter and refocus as you move from objective to objective. All right, that's all I have to say about microscopy.